everyone. This is Milton James. This is episode eight of the Milton James podcast. And today I, I, I'm so uh, excited, uh, honored, and grateful to bring to you uh, one of my secret weapons, Mrs. Andrea Lovett, who is my assistant. She is managing our transactions. She's doing a bunch of stuff for me, and, and we you know, pretty much had the best year of my career, and uh, we owe a, a big chunk of it to her. And I wanted to introduce uh, a great assistant, a great admin to the world, and and c- from a perspective of what a good admin looks like, what they do on a daily basis, and just bring that person to you. So, Mrs. Andrea Lovett, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you, Milton. <laughs> Excellent. So, so y- you and I have been working together for some time now, and and I wanted to get a little bit of uh, background on you. So, who is Andrea Lovett? Uh, um, I'm a mom. I, I live in Florida, you know, so I like Central Florida. I love our, our state. I don't know. I'm too crazy with all the people moving here, but, you know, it's always good business for us. So It's it's great business for us. So where are you from originally? Oh, I was born in Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay, so the Northeast. Yes. Excellent. And, and so you've got a family. Yes, sir. All right, got you. Tell me about the family. So I have uh, three kids. My oldest is 20, and she's in college in Pennsylvania. Uh, my middle son is a junior at Winter Park High School, and my youngest is a freshman in Winter Park High School. That's so exciting. And the reason I ask about your family is a lot of times when you know we hire a great assistant or uh, you know we, we adopt their family. So your kids are my kids. <laughs> Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of an accountability tech. So, so your background, as far as your 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 business, your real estate experience, what, what does that look like? Um, I've been in the business, I think, about 11, 12 years. I okay. started back um, with wholesalers, actually. And, oh, okay. Um, so- yeah, my husband and myself, we bought a few properties and flipped it, and that's how I got into real estate. And, you know, wanted to get. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So you guys were in the real estate buying and flipping business. Yes. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And and so, how long did you guys do that? Um, for like three or four years, until the okay, market. Okay, got it. Yeah, tank. Oh uh, well, what was that experience like? It was at first it was great, then it was horrible, and then I went into wholesaling, and I wish I would have known that before we, you know, let all our properties go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, what what's wholesaling? Wholesaling is where you get a property below market value, whether short sale or bank loan. It doesn't even have to be that something that has equity in it. Gotcha. So so coming into this uh, work relationship, you had experience with uh, an average real estate transaction. Yes. All right. Even the creative real estate transaction. Good for you. <laughs> I got you. So how, how do we meet? Uh, you were a listing agent and I brought a buyer. Oh, wow. You, so you represented the buyer? Yes. Wow. Okay. So I, I think uh, you were working with a gentleman at the time. Yes. A great agent in Orlando. Oh, who was that? Brian Blake. Okay. How was that like? Were you, were you with him for a long time? Um. Yeah, I was with him for a while. I mean, I learned a lot from him. That's when I uh, met you because I kind of coordinated the whole file anyway. So... Um, it was yeah. a good relationship, I guess, from the start. Yeah, you know, that was one of the things that stood out to me. You showed the buyer, you opened the door, then you did the transaction. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then you told me a little bit about you. So so what was it that kind of started our our talks about, you know, working together in the future? Well, I started following you on Facebook right away. And I yeah. was seeing what you were doing. You know, you're a really positive person. Um, I was always interacting on your post yeah. and um, yeah, I moved away pre pandemic yeah. to uh, Pennsylvania to try to get my license over there and wholesale over there. And then okay. the pandemic hit and they shut down. Oh, so I couldn't no. move forward. <laughs> oh, so you had all these plans and then you went to another state and then you mm-hmm. have to shift a little bit. Yes. That's normal. You know, a lot of times we have a plan and then something, you know, get, gets caught in the wind there. So so what was it about our conversations before we even started talking uh, about working together that you know, really kind of sparked the interest? I, I like your confidence. Uh-huh. 
yeah, you were just very confident and I just felt like you knew what you were doing and someone that I can definitely learn from. Okay. Okay. So I think I remember uh, you saying to you, if you ever are looking for a position, just give me a call and we'll figure something out. That happened a few times and then Brian uh -huh. got upset with you. Good. <laughs> yeah. We were supposed to meet up for coffee or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. it never happened. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, a lot of you guys follow us and you know, they were in the Mike Ferry coaching program with Mike. And uh, one of the things our coach used to say is you're always looking for talent. Absolutely. And so, so, you know, so you went to Pennsylvania and uh, you, I think you were working with another agent as well. Yes. I was working um, with uh, Compass Real Estate, Lavinia Smarconish. Yeah. She okay. was really big you know, over there. Okay. Got it. And, and so how long were you with her? Not even three weeks. Got yeah. Cause, uh, yeah. When everything shut down. Gotcha. So, so then you have to come back. And, and so uh, we've been working together for some time now. Yeah. About a year and a half. A, a year and a half. Wow. You know, the, I got to tell you, I really appreciate you being here with me for so long. Uh, one of the questions I've, I've been asked is how do you keep an admin for more than six months? And so what, what is it about our working experience that keeps you in that, in that chair? Well, um, I, I guess me with my personal personality, I'm really humble and I like to, it takes a while to get to know you. I think it, in the beginning we were bumping heads and now that I know you and your personality and your style, I can just, you know, run with that and work with it. Okay. Gotcha. So, uh, going, getting to know each other, you know, adapting mm -hmm. to the personalities because it takes a little bit of time to really get to know each other in a clicking basis. Mm -hmm. You know, and you also clicking. provide a very positive um, work atmosphere, too. It's, it's really good. I didn't realize how toxic my last work environment was until I started working with you. Okay. And, and you know, we're not going to talk about that, you know, <laughs> where you worked before, but that's okay. So what mm -hmm. keeps you in the position other than the environment, the, you know, all the stuff? What keeps you, you know, working there for a year and a half? Um, I feel like I still have a lot to learn from you. You know, I feel okay. like you're one of the best and, you know, being your right hand, you know, I learn a lot from that. Okay. Gotcha. And it sounds like you're in a cafeteria. So, it, it, you know, obviously, you know, keeping you in that position, what does our team look like? Like, what do you do on our, on our team here? Um, you know, I come in for early uh, check. I monitor all your emails. You know, I first things first is checking all the pendings, make sure that everything's on track, you know, following up with our clients, uh, regardless if it's just a relationship regarding the file or if we needed to drop by and take them a COVID test at home, COVID oh. test, and stuff. <laughs> given that first class service, uh, to the clients, yeah, um, kind of like, kind of like the Disney experience we, we talk about. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, so th thank you for doing that. We really appreciate your service. So what you're saying is your job is to give world-class service to our, our clients. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and so what makes you exciting? Uh, what, what excites you about that process? Um, you know, starting from the front, from getting the listing, it's always exciting. We got a new listing. We're building the relationship with the seller and then we get it on the contract and then we it's just being part of the whole process from the start meeting the seller until you know getting the seller what they wanted at the end and everyone's gotcha. happy. Yeah, yeah I've I, noticed a lot a lot of times you, you you know if a deal is going a little shaky, you're you're emotionally involved in that, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, you're and I asked you one day, Andrea, you know, it's it'll close. You know, you're like, Well, I just really want to help this person. Why 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 are you like that? Why I, I don't know. I like helping people, you know, I like helping people get to, you know, their end goal and, and what they want. And, you know, you get involved and you, you start, you know, you start building relationship with them. So you can start caring for them. I got you. So, you know, if you had to highlight uh, what, a, what the role and duties of a perfect admin would be, what would that be? Oh, wow. Um, definitely checklists. You know, to keep you on track. Um, I think a lot of times it's like the momentum. You get you're used to doing stuff, and um, you know things can fall through the cracks. So, uh, 
a checklist, you know, uh, you have your listing, pending, and closing checklists you yeah. to stay on top of it, you know, make sure that it falls through the cracks. I got you. So talk to me about those checklists. Like what, what's a checklist for a real estate agent? A checklist. So we have um, our listing checklist. It has the information, the address, the client information, so we don't have to go digging for it. And um, so whenever we get a listing, we do the intro call, you know, introduce, uh, you know, build up the expectancy with the, you know, what they should be expecting from us and, you know, get the property active and on the market right, as soon as possible. That's Absolutely. as far as listings go. Yeah. So, so one of your duties is listing, you know, processing. Uh, what about that third duty? What about that checklist for pending files? Once the property goes under contract, it's a whole new set of, you know, checklists. You got to make sure, you know, that everybody uh, is, I'm communicating with everybody in the transaction and all parties understand and know what's going on until we get to the end, to the finish line. I got you. So that that's really important, especially with the fact that I, I, I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the call last year, you personally by yourself, of course, you know, you know, you helped us out with 93 transactions, mm -hmm. one assistant. How, how, the, how'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess working with you, I don't know if being a mom helps, you know, juggling so much, but, uh, you know, I, I think with you, I have a good leader, you know, that, that keeps it positive. So anytime there was an issue or if I thought it was an issue, you know, you just turned it around quickly. Yeah, because the, the real estate transaction gets messy sometimes. So our mm -hmm. job, you and I, is to keep an even keel, Mike always tells us. And so, yeah. you know, you know, I wrote down a question. What are your ultimate goals as a professional in, in your position, and I did notice there's a big, uh, some pictures behind you. W what is that? My, our, my 2022 vision board. <laughs> okay. That we did at the beginning of the year as a group here, as a team. Got it. So, so what's most exciting about your vision board for 2022? The new car. <laughs> oh yeah, that. What is that? It's it's, it's going to be the baby blue range. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So no, like, 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 like a little, you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ultimate goals as a professional. What is that for you? Ultimate goal as a professional. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think the, the ultimate goal is, is to keep the client happy to follow up with them so we can, you know, get the referrals and, and the return business from them. So the ultimate goal, I would say service. Okay. And, and I can agree that that's our goal for sure. But mm -hmm. Andrea Lovett from Connecticut with the three kids, what's her goal? My goal is to be a Milton Jr. in the future. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and then how can someone like me help you get there? I'm doing what you do, Milton. You do these podcasts. You're always um, willing to learn and taking in new information. You don't stay stuck on where you're at and what you know. Uh, I think that, you know, says a lot. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Now, listen, uh, any questions or cons uh, any, any questions you guys that are live on the call have for Andrea, uh, we're going to open up in a couple of minutes, but I, I want to personally thank you and you're, you're a phenomenal uh, assistant and, and more than an assistant, you do a lot more than the job uh, entails. And we really appreciate you, me and Ed, for sure. So we, we wanted to take this moment. Uh, hey, hang on. Ed is right here. Ed, you appreciate Andrea, right? <laughs> there he is. Okay, perfect. So we wouldn't be doing the type of business without you, of course. And, and we're always looking to grow that position for sure. So um, any questions you guys have for Andrea? Perfect. So we got somebody in the call. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I think Ed, you raised your hand. How do I do this? I think I'm a meal. Can you hear me? Yeah, so Andrea, my question is, you know, because it's always for me is, you know, mind boggling. You know, sometimes we have 10 listing at the time, seven pendants, and three buyers on the contract, right? And, you know, I always see you like, how can you keep so calm and handling all that transaction at once? 
Um, I just break up my days. You know, for me, my priority is what's going to give us the money, get us the money first. So focus on all my pending deals first. Um, listing second, because mm. that'll be the next one up, you know, to get it under contract so we can get paid. And then, um, you know, dealing with the, with the active buyers afterwards. So I, I uh, pretty much just try to set a schedule and, and follow it, you know. Come in, you got to yeah. show up. You have to be here every day. Yeah, a lot of times, guys, what we try to you know show Andrea is a, an assistant schedule is just like a realtor schedule. We have our three parts of our day. We got money time in the morning where we reach out to clients. And when we talk about making money, getting the money, we mean getting the service done. Because if we get what the client wants, then we get paid. If we don't, then we don't, right? Mm -hmm. Third part, the second part of our day is admin time. We still have admin. And then the third part of our day is, is show time. So it sounds like you have a few parts to your day. What are they? Uh, yeah, like like I said, the, the morning part of the day is just following up on all our pending deals, you know, trying to stay on top of them before fire breaks out. Um, then dealing with all our uh, active listings, the new ones that you get, because you're getting, you know, you can get one a day. So starting that relationship with those sellers, you know, putting it on the market, making sure it gets the adequate uh, marketing. And then, you know, helping being there for you and Ed, whatever you guys need. Got it. So time blocking, but if something pops up that can affect the business the outcome, then we stop what we're doing to take care of that fire. Fair enough. Yes, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We have another couple hands, ladies. You just go okay. ahead and unmute yourself. And then, yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, quick question. You talk about the checklist, Andrea. Oh, do you use any specific software? to keep everything organized or it's just a simple Excel? Yeah, we use dot loop. So everything is pretty much um, in the file from the beginning in dot loops. And then we have our you know, put the tasks on there and check it off as um, as we go with, with the timelines when it goes under contract, like we need the EMD with the three days, making sure that that's been, you know, that the buyer's got wire instruction and that that's been received. Um, so I pretty much just keep it, um, everything in dot loop. Okay. And, and, yeah. and a lot of our checklists are printed out on paper too. So mm -hmm. like, for example, uh, you know, Andrea has to hand this to me when we get a listing and that way I could see where it's at, you know, where we are in the transaction and then anything we're missing, my job as a leader is to, to hold her accountable to these things. Got it. Um, perfect. We've got Victoria, Victoria, just go ahead and unmute yourself. All right. Um, thank you for having me on this uh, call. It's excellent uh, opportunity. And um, I was uh, always been concerned with uh, having assistant licensed about the conflict of interests. So you run your own business and Andrea has her own clients. How you manage this all? Well, we have, Milton and I have uh, an agreement that we had from, from the start. So um, he has, I mean, his clients are my clients. That's how I see it. You know, we're all a team. It's all one. Um, and then I, you know, I, I pretty much stay busy in, in the office doing everything. You know, after hours, you know, if he needs somebody to open a door, I'm always available for that. And then after hours, I have my, you know, my clients that, you know, Milton assists me with as well. Mm -hmm. But from, yeah, from the, from the start, we have uh, an agreement and then, you know, my commission split is obviously different than, um, you know, a regular buyer's agent or license agent. I see. Okay. Yeah, so Victoria, Did you ever have we... some, um, I'm, I'm sorry for interruption. Okay. So did you ever had like some um, misunderstanding about that clientele base? Cause, uh, like Milton, you as a prospector, you're prospecting for business. How about Andrea? Uh, like she's busy managing all your office and after hours, um, she's also prospecting. How you split this kind of leads? Uh, you can take that one now, Andrea. Um, what, Milton is very easy to work with, you know. Um, I've worked with other people that if they, they felt with, if they had a conversation with them off the back that that's their client, Milton feels like if you close them, you know, then that's, you, you close them, you push them, you know. So, yeah, we have like a, uh, 
I guess a different relationship that I'm not sure how to really explain it. But you know, like from the start, we any leads that he gives me, you know, is is a certain um, percentage, and then any leads that I bring is a certain percentage. But I stay, you know, pretty busy. I do, um, you know, try to prospect the neighborhoods whenever we do get listings, but. Um, like I said, our commission split is different, so it's, it's all going through Milton anyways. Yeah, so Victoria, you know, as far as uh, commission splits and pay, they, you know, we're, we're trained through the Mike Ferry organization to pay an, an assistant a, a salary based on the market. So your market might be different than my market. And then based on um, if they bring in something, if a piece of business, a buyer or seller, uh, or um, someone they found you know, doing shopping or anyone at the Christmas party that says, I want to buy a house that comes from her sphere. So then she would get a referral fee, like anyone who's licensed would get a referral fee. Now, to be clear, if she was not licensed, she would not get a referral fee, but she's a licensed assistant and her license is hung with our brokerage through our, um, through our referral network to make sure that everything is on the up and up. So we always do everything above water. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Ram, you had a question, my friend. Just unmute yourself and then you'll be able to ask the question. <clears throat> Sorry, um, how often you and your assistant have a meeting? Do you guys meet on a daily basis to touch base with the, the new task and a pending task or you have a weekly meeting? How often do you guys connect? I say daily. Yeah, we powwow daily, um, you know, on, on anything that we have under contract. And then we have uh, end of the month meetings, you know, end of the week meetings. We, we meet daily. We talk daily at least. And yeah, you both and Ram, start we, at the same time? We, we, uh, we have a lunch meeting. So, like, you know, a lot of us on our team, we're, we're trying to be healthy. So we bring our lunch. So me, Andrea, and Edward, who's our buyer agent, we have lunch together. And as we're eating, we're just talking about our files. Did you, did you have another question? You, you said something. Sorry about that, Ram. No, that's great. Thank you. That answers my oh. question. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. And then once a week, we, we like to do a group lunch just to you know bring any concerns, any, any questions, any trainings. And actually, this call was designed this was used to be a call for our buyer agents at a couple and then i had a few isas but i i combined this call to make it into a podcast to really just contribute to you guys so that that's the the purpose of this call all right julie julie rosanier uh you have a question is it rosanier reasoner thanks milton Re reasoner sorry about that thank you it's look hairy if you're old enough <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrea, thank you so much for sharing all of your experiences today. I appreciate it. And I'm probably going to be circling back um, to follow up on what Nahora asked you earlier. I'm a transaction coordinator and she asked you about software and um, you mentioned checklists. So I'm wondering kind of are those homegrown or do you get them from Dot Loop? I don't have access to Dot Loop, but I've used Transaction Desk and I also use Asana, which is like a project management um, Kanban board to kind of help me track my tasks. Um, what have you used other software besides Dot Loop? Something that I might be no, with? not here. I mean, I use Google Docs and Google Calendar yeah. um, a lot. I mean, anytime I, I schedule an appointment, photographer inspection, it goes on the calendar right away. So I, you know, where the calendar stays open because Milton has his you know meetings there. So um, you know, so I always like to put the tasks on there. I'm open to new software. I'm open, <laughs> you know, to to use things, you know, to help. The, the process along, um, but with dot loop and I think uh, Google Calendar is pretty much how I stay on top of everything. Google Calendar, thank you for that. Do you keep your own calendar that you share out or does your entire team share a single calendar so everybody else um, I use Milton's calendar. I put it on there so he can know what's going on with the files as well. Mm -hmm. And then with my personal calendar is, you know, it's my personal, but I, for everything for work, I use Milton's calendar so that way he's involved and he, he knows what's going on. Okay, thanks for that, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. One question I think you may have asked, uh, Julie, was where do we get the checklist from? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we everything that we do as far as a checklist, um, I've written down. So in the Mike Ferry Sales System, Mike has a chapter on business uh, checklists, business systems, 
And essentially a checklist is a series of things we do inside of a transaction and, and the simpler, the better. So our, our, our current new listing checklist is about 20 points. We're trying to chop it down to 10. That way, if it's simple, then we'll do it. You know, and, and right now, since the last retreat, uh, Mike told us to every week have a daily or every month have a meeting about what should be on the checklist and what should be off the checklist. Oh, and, and then finally, I created those checklists. So right now, Andrea is empowered to, to take anything that she doesn't feel like should be on there so that the checklists are, are pretty much formulated how her brain works, if yeah, that makes, that any makes sense. sense. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Frank, Frank Donnelly, you had a question, sir. About potentially hiring an admin, you're our guest today. You're you're, you're going to ask a question. Thank you. So I just hired an admin. Um, I want to say like three weeks ago, just getting it um, up and going. Um, as a new admin, which my admin is my mother, um, I um, took her from her last job to give her an opportunity in real estate. And um, what should I have her focusing on as a new admin? Um, as a new admin, I mean, are you, is she going to be working with both listings and your pendings or is she just focusing on the pendings? Um, I have her basically working on, on everything. Um, I do have a seller checklist, um, mm -hmm. that I use for my CC and now I just basically added my, um, assistant her, um, to do certain tasks. And then, um, I have a buyer checklist as well. So I should be working with both and hopefully, um, from the basically to hold the client's hand from the start to the finish of the transaction as much as possible. Yeah, that's basically the way I do it. You know, from, from the start, from the time that Milton has the appointment, I'm confirming the appointment with them. So I'm already introducing myself um, with them, learning them because every client is different. Some clients don't call me, just email me. So I know which ones I can just email and text and I know which ones I need to um, touch and, and have a conversation with. Um, so it's just um, learning. Again, it's she's your mom, so it's going to be pretty easy. She knows you already. Yeah, and, and, yeah, depends and, on the mom. Yeah. Depends on the mom. <laughs> it's called accountability, bud. With, with me, yeah, with me, it's always the, like once I've had everything on my pending stuff, what could I do to relieve Milton? What could I do to make your day easier? What could I take off of you know, your hands that you don't have to worry about anymore? Because he's, he's the rainmaker. He's, you know, he's the one out there getting deals, and we need him to stay doing that. Hey, Frank, on that, I will say the first 30 days, uh, first of all, to hire an admin, the purpose of that isn't for you to go to the beach. It's not for you to go to Starbucks. It's for you no. to stay on the phones. Okay. So for the first 30 days, when I hired Andrea, my coach at the time through MFO said her job is everything else. Okay. You have one job, find an appointment, be on an appointment, get a listing. She can't do that. So her job is to do everything else. You got one thing to do. Let's say there's 180 things in the real estate transaction. You have one thing. She has 187 or 185, right? So I would suggest just have your mom for the first month watch you and make sure you're on schedule. So the first uh, job of an admin is to keep you on schedule. Now, if you're not going to follow your schedule, which you know a lot of us are guilty of, then you shouldn't have an admin. You know, she's not going to get money if you don't produce. The second job is to handle all incoming calls. And I'm just reading from the Mike Ferry sales system. And then that third job is to handle all the paperwork. And that's why we were talking a lot about checklists. But for the first 30 days, you should just have her shadow you. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you and the other thing. Yeah, the other thing a lot of people get overwhelmed by is, oh my God, you know, what, let's say your market rate in your area is 30 grand or 50 grand, whatever it is. Most people think it's, let's say 30 grand. It's not 30 grand a year because you're not hiring someone for a year. It's whatever that number is divided by 12 and you're hiring them for 30 days. Like Andrea and I, we started with a free trial. So after the free 30 day trial, we would re we negotiated a one year contract. And here we are a year and a half later. So a lot of people don't hire an assistant because of the, the financial commitment, because they're thinking a year, but we want to think in a month. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? I know a lot of you guys are thinking about building teams and all this stuff. Most, yeah, most, the biggest problem that most people, you know, realtors uh, face 
is we try to hire a, a buyer agent first when we don't have an assistant, we don't have the administrative system. So one of the things I appreciate most about someone like Andrea, she keeps us productive. I have a question, Andrea. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to 10, if you look back at the last year, how would you say you performed on a scale of one to 10? I'm always hard on myself, no, and I don't know, six. I think I, there's always room, there's always room for improvement. I'm with you. What would make mm -hmm. you a 10? What would make me a 10? Oh, ah, uh, geez, I don't know, no 10. Uh, everything, I don't know, I'm not saying I'm a perfectionist, but, you know, for it to be perfect, you know, which is hard to do. Will it make me yeah. a 10? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Work harder? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Now, if we got you to an eight, would those goals behind you be accomplished? Oh, yeah. And how would that feel? That would feel amazing. It feel great. Yes, yeah. And we're committed to helping you get there. So thank you so much, Andrea. Do you guys have any other questions for Andrea before we let you go? All right, perfect. Well, Mike says, giving great customer service is the best way to generate business. And we appreciate Andrea for giving great customer service, which, which will keep improving our business. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Milton. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Thank you, Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Milk. Appreciate you. Welcome, <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs>